if we right now asked our friends to stereotype us, they'd probably say I'm the metal guy and you're like the hipster indie music nerd. Yeah. And so probably. far this this year, you've gone with two rock metal albums and I have not. Oh, yeah, that is a thing, isn't it? Well, OK, in all fairness, I did give you I gave you choices because I was torn on a few albums um, and I forget what they all were, but I also know one of the other potential albums was Wes Borland. So another, I assume I at least, like you heavy asked metal. Me Wes Borland. I think I think you asked me Iggy Pop or or this. Maybe Wes Borland came out after that. But oh, I thought I listed all three of them. I um, I remember. But anyway, hi, I'm Chris, and I'm Jeff, and welcome to the Sound Judgment Podcast, where every episode we'll be discussing all of the important musical topics, from reviews to which member of Motley Crue is the most vile. I'm going to judge the officials. I'm going to judge all the judges. It's going to take you people years to recover from all my opinions. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah, we we did another, like, super indie thing at your recommendation. Yes. Uh, Chris, tell us what this was. So, this is the... Oh, man. Well, it depends on how you look at it. It might be the second or third solo album by a musician named shauna cleveland wait how is this possibly her second she very obviously has two previous albums or is the one like not considered an album or something? so the first one is one of those you know shauna and the band names albums you know where it, i don't know if she did all of the writing on it and stuff like that oh okay, so the, that. the second the second album and the, this one um, are like just under her name and she dropped like, the, I think it was like Shauna and the Sand Cla- Castles or something like that. Oh, huh. Okay, I did not know that because they're all on Spotify just under Shauna Cleveland. Yeah, she dropped that when she put it on Spotify and that might be like the implication that it was just a solo album, but I don't I don't know completely who to credit it to because I don't listen okay. to that one as much because it's kind of also not exactly in the same style. Yeah. Um, and I don't care for it as much. But she is a singer and guitarist uh, originally from a psychedelic surf rock band called Lelouz, which I don't know if you listen to him, but that sounds like it might be your kind of thing. Yeah, so you had me listen to it a little bit. Um, and then I'll be honest, when I was listening to this newest Shauna Cleveland album, I was genuinely thinking, where did this come from and why is this what I'm listening to? So I want to know, like, how do you even know about this? Uh, I feel like you might have told me that, I just don't remember. Opening for the Mountain Goats. Ship okay. Mongos. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking like this makes no sense, and then I vaguely remembered like, okay, this was the weird surf rock girl, but I still wasn't putting together how this was a thing that you are recommending to me. Well, you know, every once in a while I do like to go see um some old men with <sighs> guitars be sad on stage. You do. You and, do. And she opened for them, and she was very high and very entertaining. <laughs> I. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I'm gonna open, I'm gonna open this talk. The album itself is called Manzanita, Mm -hmm. which is apparently a breed of tree native to California. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna let that go on itself. That's a thing. It's kind of a hippie. Um, We're, we're gonna use some buzzwords. Oh boy. Are you you ready? We're gonna go with, we're gonna go with, we're gonna go with. Album review buzzwords. Oh I Jesus! Need a, I need a ch- I need a chime sound effect here. I'll I'll find a wind chime. Enigmatic. Soundscape. Ethereal. These are the words that this album makes me think of, because they sound like the kind of words that a real album reviewer would use to describe <laughs> it. This whole album is drenched in just like. The the amount of reverb on this album would make Jim Morrison hard. <laughs> like, dead Jim Morrison has a hard-on for how much reverb is on this album. Are you saying the stiff has a stiffy? <laughs> it sure does. Not that it's a bad thing that this album has a lot of reverb, but I think that says a lot about what kind of album this is. It is it's, sort of a, um, it is a, sort of like a folky album, but yes, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, to use a Devin Townsend word goo. There's a lot of reverb. There's a lot of that ethereal qualities 
in especially in the vocals. It's a folky album, but it's also very like new agey almost. Yeah. Do you remember those um uh those like kiosks that were like in pharmacies and like Walmart in the early two yeah. thousands? They had like the not like a touch screen, but it was like soft buttons and it was like album samples. Mm-hmm. Right? So they always, those always sold albums. Like, I actually have one from college. Um, it's it's called Music to Encourage Stress Relief by Dr. Lee R. Bartell. And it was, like, from one of those stands, and it's just, like, super weird new agey music, right? That's what this album reminds me of. <laughs> but I would, and maybe maybe you can correct me, because I'm not as well versed in a lot of that stuff aside from stuff that you've shown me but this has a little bit moodier maybe not quite dark but certainly like a moodier atmosphere than a lot of what i've heard in that genre yeah this is like okay so i mean a lot of new age music is is trying to be empowering and this is trying not to break down and cry not that this is like a this is not like a breakout depressing album but this is definitely a I have the weight of the world on my shoulders album, and I'm trying to get it off of me. To describe it through um, one song title, 10 Hour Drive Through West Coast Disaster. Yeah. Yeah. But a a lot of this may... Well, her first album is kind of like that too, but this kind of doubles down on it. Uh, And that may be because this is coming off of not only her having her first child, but uh, surviving cancer i believe breast cancer but i could be wrong but certainly surviving cancer okay so i actually missed the breast cancer thing i did catch that this album is is practically in two halves half of it was written while still pregnant and half after she she gave birth to her child um i I, so i i went into this not reading a whole lot about it at first just confirming breast cancer Okay, and then I did do a little digging it because I wanted to know a little bit what's going on because I was getting a lot of um, the word you used was hippie. The word I'm going to use is um, she's a member at Camp Woo Woo, which is my way of thinking like this is someone who sounds like they believe yoga can cure disease. <laughs> I get a lot of that feeling. Yeah. This whole album is about being in nature in one way or another, or maybe even being one with nature. I'm not really sure. She probably really likes crystals. She <laughs> could probably tell you a lot about astrology. <laughs> she probably likes crystals. It is the best description of this. Oh, look what you made me do. Oh, man. <laughs> God, yeah, okay. Very much so. Um, okay, I, we, we keep, like, not actually talking about the album itself, and I'm going to get to that in a second. But just one more thing I do want to say to anyone who wants to listen to this album, to, again, Manzanita by Shanna Cleveland. I know we've talked before about the way you listen to music. And I don't mean in the way you like mentally process it. I mean, very literally in like, do you put on music on speakers behind you while playing video games? Do you blast music in the car? Do you whatever? Mm -hmm. This is an album that I don't think you're doing it justice unless you are listening to it in an otherwise quiet place, preferably through headphones or something where like you're not being distracted. This is definitely an album that needs to kind of all encompass you. This is your nighttime rumination album. Yeah, this is very much like a this is a very meditative album, I guess you could say. For whatever, for whatever that's worth. Okay, can I talk about the fact that I hate track 2? It's called Bloom. And it's it 11 is, seconds. It's 11 seconds of just noise, and it sounds like something Tool would have written. It, it sounds I like was, it should just be the ending of the first track. <laughs> and I was very annoyed that that track one was kind of fine, but otherwise unremarkable, and then track two was this bullshit little musical <laughs> interlude. So I did not have a great start to this album, but that's okay, because track three is a track called Faces in the Firelight, and this absolutely redeemed itself. This song is beautiful. You didn't like A Ghost? A Ghost is fine. Okay. It is a fine, 
super introduction, folky introduction to the album, but it's not a song I'm gonna go back to. Faces in the fire, or faces in the firelight. I just realized my notes here. My phone must have autocorrected firelight to Firefox. <laughs> faces, faces in the Firefox. Faces in the firelight. I mean, it's it's a folky song again, drenched in reverb. But you have like a string accompaniment, and you have a, an upright bass, and they're just outlining chords behind her singing, and. <clears throat> There's a, a reoccurring phrase in the song, which is the sentence, Do you love me like I do you? Which, the way she does the melody, it's one of those ones where there's like a, a musical phrase that ends before the line is finished. So the way it sounds is she says, Do you love me like I do you? you. There's this pause, and then she breaks into you. It's almost like she's asking two separate questions. Do you love me like I do, and do you love me the way I love you? And this is just, like, a beautiful song. I did find an interview um, through Flood of Magazine, where she basically described... She gave, like, a rundown of every track. And um, I'm going to keep going back to this, because I thought it was interesting to see her own words, because it says a lot about who she is and where these songs came from. But her description of the song Faces in the Firelight was was pretty simple. It's it's just like recounting of the feeling of she's out in the woods and her husband's, you know, making a fire and it's laid out and she's just seeing her face in <clears throat> excuse me, seeing her face, seeing his face in the in the light from the fire. Yeah, it's just and I, it's from just what I this, from what I understand, she was, like, watching him burn leaves, and it was just, like, about her watching him, like, burn this pile of leaves. Yeah, and it's just it's just a beautiful capturing of a moment that I, I it's it's one of those songs I really don't know if I can explain, I don't really know if I can explain it, because it's it's definitely one of those songs where she's trying to convey how she felt in a certain moment, and that's almost impossible to do. Like, you can't tell someone how you really felt about a thing, and, and I think she did a really good job, ultimately. Then the next next track that really stands out to me, it's it's track six. It's called Quick Winter Sun, and it is, it is absolutely my breed of, like, melancholic, wintry song. I could have used this song about five months ago <laughs> uh, when it was actually winter, but you know we're. You know what's great is that they keep coming around, though. Yeah, I was gonna say. Luckily, I have this for next year. I'm just sad I didn't have this already. Like I listened to this, and I'm just like, I would have loved this song in like the end of November. Uh, but now I have to wait for months to get to that again. But here is where <laughs> I don't know what to think. Going back to that Flood magazine interview with her, she says, and I quote. On this record, I alternate between standard and G minor tuning on my guitar. G minor is a dark, mysterious tuning, and to me, its recurrence throughout different tracks contributes to the atmosphere of the album as a whole. And that is so close to the whole spinal tap bit of D minor is the saddest key. <laughs> and I cannot take that shit seriously. I'm sorry. I am a firm believer in... Uh, I mean, as as a guitar player, to paraphrase the great Pierre Ben Suzanne, who is a uh, like contemporary fingerstyle guitar player, he got his start playing Celtic music, despite the fact that he's a Frenchman, and he plays exclusively in a tuning called Dad Gad. But his thought process is: no one should be able to tell what tuning your guitar is in. If you are playing something that sounds like it's in Dadgad, you are kind of defeating the purpose. The tunings exist to make things easier to fit under your fingers. They do not exist to shape the sound of what you're playing. And I hate this whole, the G minor tuning on my guitar is dark and atmospheric and like, just shut up and just say that it's just what worked. The, the tuning of your instrument really did not do the song for you. Give yourself the credit for writing a song. You just happen to use G minor tuning. I know you probably like crystals, apparently. I wouldn't be surprised if you do. Give the crystals credit. 
anything other than the goddamn tuning of your guitar. Please. That was both pretentious and motivational. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. I, that's what I aim for. <laughs> <laughs> I think that describes me fairly well. I feel both insulted and motivated. Good. I'll take it. Um, I'm. You know what? I'm going to take that as a compliment. That's fine. <laughs> It's like when you bully someone to get the best out of them. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Okay, I, you know what? I'm on board. I'm taking these as compliments. Thank you. But quick winner son. otherwise, I mean, I, I I, think my interpretation of this song is, is um, I don't think this is a crazy thought. I don't think this song has um, some super deep meaning. I really do think it's, let's be honest here, the days are shorter in the winter, and this is a song about being outside in nature. So this is a song about just like, you're outside, you're in nature, it's winter, and the days are just not as long as you'd maybe want them to be. Because you're outside, and then all of a sudden, here you are, and you are... And the sun's coming down. In nature, down. it is suddenly dark, it is nighttime, and you are now... I I'm, I'm picturing her and her husband by the fire again, you know. You might have been out adventuring, but you're, you're, you're back, you're back in whatever you're currently calling home at the moment. And it's just a really beautiful song. I really love this. That's pro That makes more sense than it being about um, wanting Winter Sun to put out a fucking album and hurry the fuck up. <laughs> it is. It is not. But I like that interpretation. Quick, quick Winter Sun. I feel like there's a song about George R. R. Martin. Is there a song that's like <laughs> Hurry know. George or something like that? I don't know, but there probably should be. Oh, I feel like that's a song. I feel like there's a song that's like Hurry Up George or whatever. I need to look up that and see if that's a thing. <laughs> but okay, so up to this point in the album, though, this is like, yo, know, that was like, uh, we're talking about the first half, which I think, again, if, if I'm understanding this correctly, the first half was while she was still pregnant was like part of the inspiration for, for her writing this. And then, notably, at least I think, starting on the song called Babe, this song was like a breath of fresh air to me. Because it suddenly felt more like a song, and much less more like a soundscape art piece, which the previous songs on the album sound like. Not that that's a bad thing, but suddenly the album starts to feel a little more structured a little less airy and breathy and nebulous and a little more, there's very notable chords going on here and it has a structure and it just feels like a song. Well, and to that point, I mean, I she debuted Ghost on that tour with the Mountain Goats, which was 2018, 2019. So she's had been working on this album for quite some time. And, and it's it completely possible that like during the pandemic, her writing style just changed too. Oh, okay. I mean, again, like I would, this is just off of my very limited understanding of, of the process. I just know a lot of, uh, I saw a, a good bit about, about her, you know, at least a lot of this album was written between her being pregnant versus, you know, giving birth and having a, a, a child. Um, but babe is another great song just because again, it, it suddenly feels like a song. Now we're really getting into like just true folky territory. And this is, this is a great song. And I think that's, like, really tied up with the song Walking Through Mountain Dew. Morning Dew. Or, I'm sorry, Walking Through Morning Dew. Mountain Dew. I'm sorry, not Mountain Dew. Thinking about that, that, that summer freeze again. No, I was actually thinking about the fact that that's, like, a common phrase in Irish folk songs. Because <laughs> it, it means whiskey, right? Yeah, Okay, no, anyway. Yeah, all right. So, Walking Through Morning Dew is just another one. Like, this just this just feels like a song. And I appreciate the fact that suddenly we're now in, like, a very structured, folky world. I'm going to quote her one more time from that interview because I thought this was just really cute. Quote, This is a song about spring and rebirth, looking at my son's face and seeing his resemblance to my grandma, Jeanette, who died years before he was born. A picture I have of my grandma when she was a prom queen is in the liner notes of the album with the lyric, In your crown and all surrounded by those girls you knew, good to see it all come back around so soon. And if that is not the cutest damn thing I have heard in months, <laughs> that she's, she, I don't know, it's just such a cute ode to seeing her grandmother in her son. It's just adorable, and I'm also now worried that her son looks like her grandmother. I, I'm 
Not sure if that's a good thing or not. People can look however they want, Jeff. It just reminds me a lot of how I, I had a couple good friends in high school, John and Matt, and then they had an older sister. And the problem is, John and Matt look like their mom, and their sister looks like their dad. <laughs> and it's just like such an unfortunate mix uh, for whatever that's worth. I mean, not that, not that any of them are bad looking. It's just when you think about that phrase, like, the boys look like their mom and the girl looks like their dad. That just sounds weird. But it's obviously not a bad thing. I mean, like, looking like your parents and grandparents or whatever is a normal thing. It's just the way life is sometimes. Yeah, nah, genetics are weird. So, I have one more track. I have a thing I want to say about it. And uh, I'm going to say, okay, you actually referenced this track. It is track 10, and it is called 10 Hour Drive Through West Coast Disaster. And this song, kind of song, <clears throat> is um, it is her reciting a poem, just spoken poetry, with like an organ synth backing it. Which I know is your favorite kind of music. It sounds like something Patti Smith would have done. The difference is, she is so close to being buried in the mix under the organ that this track is genuinely irritating to listen to. Like, I, I'm genuinely confused how this album went from Babe, which is just like a really great folky song, to feeling like the whole nails on a chalkboard thing in one track. You know, Jeff, I gotta say, though, if you're gonna be annoyed by tracks, it might as well be the 11 second track and the 1 minute and 24 second track. Yeah, I mean, it obviously. It may as well be two of the shortest tracks on the album. They're, they're basically interludes, um, which there is a third, isn't there? Oh, yeah, Light, Light on, on the, the Water, water yeah. is another just, like, short interlude track. So there's there's three. And, yeah, I mean, obviously, the interlude tracks are... I don't think they were meant to be the, the strongest moments. But, man, this album really could have just been three tracks shorter, couldn't it? I mean, shit, you could have just put Bloom at the end of a ghost. There's no reason that isn't just an... There's no reason Bloom was its own track. Uh, and there's no reason that 10-hour drive through West Coast Disaster was whatever it was. I don't even know what the words were because I was so annoyed listening to it. Just for the record, while I'm here, I did listen to our other two albums. Not that I'm going to go through track by track, whatever. I was just curious what I was getting myself into here. So I just want to say, like, I, I think she is very interesting. She is something I'm probably going to come back and listen to at least a handful of these songs uh, regularly. Yeah. Like, face again, Faces in the Firelight. Qu oh, hold on just a second, please. I'm sorry. Faces in the Firelight, Quick Winter Sun, and possibly Walking Through Morning Dew are songs I, I will come back through. But I don't... Uh, so I, I made a playlist of these three albums, and it's currently one hour and 47 minutes long, which is, I'm thinking, about an hour and 25 minutes longer than I need of this music. Not in general, but just, like, at any time. Listening through this whole album is kind of a chore. It's, it's too much of the same thing. It really is only 37 minutes, uh, just like throwing that out. Yeah. It's not like it's yeah, a no, long no, album. No, no, no. This one album itself is only 37 minutes long, and I think it's 20 minutes longer than it should be. And I'm not saying I want to cut out specific songs, but just that it's a lot of, it's a lot without a lot of action. It's a lot of music that isn't doing much. It reminds me too much of of those stress relief CDs that I used to listen to with an ex-girlfriend while she was having a panic attack in her dorm room and we'd put them on and then she would curl up in her bed and stare at the wall for way too long at a time uh, because she needed to recollect herself. But it just left me sitting there with her on her bed listening to boom 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 drum beat while there's music I could reenact this whole album for you 
if you wanted me to, Actually, but I'm gonna stop mean, there. I don't mean you to. understand? It's it's it. it's too much of the same thing. Yeah, it's so, beautiful, but it's too much of the same thing that I I personally could not listen to this as an album again. Yeah, well, so I mean, like you said, this is this is something where you, you're gonna probably put it on late at night and like relax to it. This is very much you're chilling out. You're done for the day. You're winding down. Yeah, and that's I mean that's when I normally listen to either of her albums because I don't I don't listen to the first one much, um, and I'm gonna say that between the two I kind of think the 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 album Night of the Worm Moon has stronger songs on it, uh, whereas this one's kind of ha- like a more like you like you said samey, but I don't mean it in a bad way. The album feels kind of like I guess an experience or something. You know what I mean? That's not a bad way to put it. I'd take I would take an experience. But I would I think the the songs on Night of the Worm Moon work a little bit better as individual songs. I have most of the same like standout tracks you do. I probably liked A Ghost a little bit better than you did, but it was also the lead single, so it was the song I heard first. Or no, Faces in the Fire for like was was the lead single, but it was the song I heard first. Oh, it's the song I heard first. It's the first track on the album, but that doesn't mean it it did anything for me specifically, right. other than it was a, an introduction to what I was getting into. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, uh, it 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 was it was a good album. I liked it. I think I liked the last one a little bit better, but this one's pretty good. I again, I didn't I didn't listen to her other albums as as um intently, I guess. But I do think actually these are some of my my like I still think you know Manzanita I hope I'm saying that right is the better of the two albums if we're referring just to Night of the Night of the Worm Moon and Manzanita it's a solid album though and I I genuinely would recommend it for someone who's looking for something new to um to uh, consult their crystals too yeah. Speaking of speaking of tours, Jeff, you want to you want to go see Shauna Cleveland next week? Let's get back in let's get back in touch with that. That actually might not that actually might be a good time. Chris, what else, what else have you been listening to lately? Well, Jeff, we have to give it a rating. Oh, I don't want to give it a rating. We have to give it a rating. I'm going to give it uh 10 hour drives through West Coast disaster out of 20. Really? You know what? Out of fifteen, that's <laughs> really fifty. Fifty fifty is too low. I'll give it out of fifty. So I've recently gotten sorry, ex, uh, sorry explanation here. I've recently recently gotten really into um, Letterboxd, which you know you know the app, the the yeah. movie rating app, Letterboxd. I spend a lot more time reading that, and also Backlogged, which is a website based on Letterboxd, but it's a, a video game review app, and they do a five star system. But I hate the idea of having a exact middle star rating. Like I never give anything a 2.5 out of five. Cause I hate like sitting on the fence yeah. to me. It's like, get off the fence, pick a side of the air. So I only do full round numbers one through five. Right. Yeah. Except for things that are God awful. I will give them the 0.5 out of spite. Uh, so I'm going to give this three amethysts out of five. Oh, thank you for picking a crystal. I, I had to, you're welcome. Seven and a half bloodstones out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Not only are you doing out of 10, you're picking halves. That's just out of 20. What's the point of this? You're the worst. What else have you been listening to? We already talked about some of what I've been listening to. It was New Metallica, New Overkill, New Archon Angel. Yeah, absolutely. The Holy Trinity, if nothing else. The Holy, is that what we're calling them? Y- you don't say that in the name of the Metallica, the Overkill, and the Archon Angel? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> One of my other most listens to was Satan because you know I went and saw Satan recently. Not like the not like the fictional character uh, or true. Not character. the man. Not Beelzebub. Uh, the um, English heavy metal band Satan. Uh, incredibly creative name. If oh, you ask uh, me. yeah, no, it wasn't good In show though. Sa- pretty good show. And I was listening to quite a bit of them before the before the show. You know how it is. You prep. You, you yeah, do pre-show absolutely. prep. Uh, and also for seemingly no reason, I've just been listening to a lot of an album called Watching from a Distance by a a doom metal band called Warning. Oh, okay. Um, I don't, I don't know why. Uh, it came on on shuffle and I was vibing and now I listen to doom metal again. Oh, all right. I mean, that's how that works though, isn't it? Like, that's just what happens. What have you been listening to? 
Um, what I... Soldier Boy have you been cranking? Oh my god, I hate the fact that you just said that, because... So, one thing, aside from the album, yo, I, I also have listened to Overkill, as we've said a few times, I did listen to the new Metallica, so on and so forth, whatever. I also decided that I'm working on um, two playlists. One playlist is what I think are the best albums from the year I was born, which was 1989. And then one is a playlist of the year I graduated high school, which is 2007. And I'm realizing that music from 2007, for the most part, was just just awful. I'm not finding much that I liked from 2007. But I was reminded, literally this morning, that Soulja Boy came out in 2007. I'm so, <laughs> so sorry. So I did, in fact, listen. I listened to Crank That Soulja Boy. And if you remember the song, Yah. Yeah. I listened to yeah. those just this morning. And what about throw some D's on that bitch? No, I, I only listened to those two because I absolutely fucking hate that. But I, I felt like being, uh, I, I felt like, I don't know, is there a word for, like, nostalgia for things you hate? Hate I wanted, I wanted a little bit of that this morning, so I went with a little bit of that this morning. Otherwise, I've been on, I've been on a big Jeff Buckley kick. Well, when aren't you? Not always just listen to Jeff Buckley, but I love Jeff Buckley. But I made a playlist of all the uh, like live recordings of him that, that are available. And I've also been listening to not just the Mountain Goats, but very specifically the album Goths. Okay, your favorite. And, and that's entirely because the uh, the air conditioning at work doesn't work. So it's it's getting really hot in the building, and I just keep sitting at my desk thinking outside it's ninety two degrees, and it just that made me think about it. And I've been putting on that album a lot, <laughs> especially while at work. <laughs> but otherwise, I did I did try and every period like periodically I'll try and listen to um like Rhapsody and Rhapsody of Fire, and then also Camelot, and try and see like. These guys Do I like it yet? These guys are staples in power metal. I should like this, and I just find it really uninteresting. It's I just doesn't just doesn't do it for me. But I do have quite a few Rhapsody streams over the past few weeks. Here's the thing: is that when people started showing me Rhapsody, it was people who didn't listen to power metal, and I was already listening to power metal, and I okay. already, I already liked um you know music is subjective but better power metal i liked better power metal more interesting at least yeah better better is the word i'm gonna use okay uh, but i think i think rhapsody's a great baby's first power metal that's not a bad way to put it actually it's it's a good introduction i think yeah you got all the parts you got all the things it's not particularly it doesn't have some of the offensive quirks that some power metal bands may have or some of the off-putting things you know but yeah, it's fine. It's just uh doesn't doesn't do much for me either. Yeah, just doesn't click with me. But yeah, that's that's been a lot of what I've been listening to, honestly. I mean, other than you know, I mean a lot of other the usuals. Like I'm sure I have I'm looking at my Spotify stats. Like, yeah, we have some LaRue and some free weights and some Eric Clapton, like who's surprised? But yeah, uh, it's a lot of lot of lot of goths by mountain goats, honestly. That's my number one thing lately. 